32% of responders on the GDC 2018 State of the Industry survey say they worked in the game industry for six years or less. That's the largest group of those polled. On the flip side, only 17% of over 30,000 people attending GDC that year claim they work in the industry seven to 10 years, and only 13% between 11 and 15 years. The lifespan of a video game developer is clearly a short one, if you ever make it into the industry at all. Game development is a hard and often thankless job. The hours are long and grueling, often poorly paid, you can be laid off at any time without warning, and there's not an insignificant chance you'll be harassed on every corner of the internet for no good reason. Some developers quit after they finished a project, or more likely, they're laid off for the sake of reshuffling, forced to find a job in one of the most competitive industries in the world. I'm working on a video right now about a promising young indie team coming together fresh out of college, only to split up with most of its members leaving the industry entirely before they ever released anything. To make it in this industry, it takes years of work, skill, dedication, and a little luck, even on the indie scene. Yet despite this, everybody thinks they can make a game better than the pros, even without any experience. But not many of these people have tried to follow through on that, have they? Well, once upon a time, there was a group of gamers completely inexperienced in game development that tried to come together to make their own game. One that would be revolutionary, something we've never seen before. Needless to say, it was a train wreck of an attempt, played out in the public eye to disastrous effect. The end result was no game, but memes aplenty, one of which even finding its way as an easter egg into Fallout New Vegas. This, my darling, is Zyborn Clock. Due to the bizarre circumstances surrounding Zyborn Clock's creation, it's hard to pin down exactly what it was. It was an attempt at starting production on an RPG to be called Zyborn Clock, first proposed in 2006 by a person or group of people on the online forum Something Awful. Something Awful is a forum with a long history going back to 1999. What's unique about the site, aside from its age, is that you have to pay money in order to post there, and view many of its archive threads. A one-time $10 fee will get you in the door, where you'll be subject to strict modding from moderators who are, quite frankly, as trollish and problematic as the people they're banning. In 2006, somebody posted about a game project they were working on and seeking help for, called Zyborn Clock. They laid out an extensive plot outline explaining a complicated and convoluted time travel mechanic involving the titular Zyborn Clock, an absurd cast of characters, and grand ambitions of making the most unique game ever made. Unfortunately, due to its age and the fact that many of the original threads surrounding the game were quickly deleted, there's not much surviving information about the original pitch, who was working on it, or how and why the project failed. We don't even know for sure who originally posted the thread. All we have left of Zyborn Clock are many memes, jokes, and fan projects that all have spawned around it over the years, and the occasional threat at something awful reminiscing about those better times gone by. It's impossible to verify just how accurate some of these posts are, but they offer us the only glimpses of the original Zyborn Clock project we've got, like this post from November 2008 claiming they know who created the project. Initially started in BYOB by Rex Meteorite and Occupy Japan, the project was launched in mid-December 2006 with great fanfare. Recruitment discussion threads were started in BYOB and games, multiple banner ads were bots, and contributors even set up an off-site server and forum to coordinate development. Over 50 active contributors were claimed, some initial work was shown off, and things were looking pretty good. As far as I know, this is the first attempt to create a video game exclusively over online forum posts and discussions ever, beating Four Leaf Studios' Katawa Shouju by exactly one month, which was created by a group of 4chan users starting in January 2007. What Zyborn Clock would have been remains a mystery. There's not much we know about the actual gameplay, even back then, other than from a handful of quotes that have survived over the years. What we do know is that it was crazy ambitious, in that way that only people who don't know what they're doing can be. Zyborn Clock was to be a steampunk RPG with a massive open world, over 100 hours of gameplay, an epic story that we'll get to in a moment, and some kind of flute-based combat system. Time travel was to be a huge part of the game, both in the story and gameplay, and your actions in the past would have huge repercussions on the present and future. Or 
maybe they wouldn't? Most people know Zyborn Clock from the infamous Ball example quote, one of two things from the project that have cemented its meme status. In attempting to explain how time travel works in the game, the creators gave an example of a set of balls near a cliff in one of the few surviving original documents of the pitch. We theorize that when you send an object through time, it does not create a new timeline that overrides the current like we had originally thought. When the object enters the time stream, time begins to correct itself. Let me use this example. Imagine four balls on the edge of a cliff. Say a direct copy of the ball nears the cliff is sent to the back of the line of balls and takes the place of the first ball. The formerly first ball becomes the second, the second becomes the third, and the fourth falls off the cliff. Time works the same way. That's the money quote everyone remembers, but the original document is even more insane. This courtesy of Everything She Knows, which has an extensive list of original documents from the project. We had all the main logistics points of our projects hammered out, and our prototype built, but there was a few more things to be decided. What would this clock do when it gets back in time besides gather energy? The answer came to me while reading an article out of a science magazine that I had picked up about two years ago. The article basically summarized how the planet got to its current point in its evolutionary cycle and where it had started. It compared key points of life over 20 millennia ago. I sat there and thought about the article for a good three hours. If we could subtly alter the cycle at which the planet terraforms and speeds up human evolution, we could, possibly, make humanity advance far past wars in a few millennia's time. My heart jumped into my throat as I ran through the bay doors to tell my colleagues that I had finally found a safe way to alter the way the timeline to such a degree as to not rip a whole in time itself. As I looked around the room, my excitement faded. All of them looked as if they had just became very ill. Doctor, you understand if we do this, we will fade from existence as the timeline corrects itself, one of my colleagues said in the grimmest manner I have ever heard him speak before. I began to turn pale and dizzy. I quickly found a chair and used the magazine that I was subsequently still clutching to fan myself. Well, there must be a way around this. There must be, I said, even though I knew I was lying to myself. We sat up that night and discussed ideas on how to develop a new one. What we came up with was grim. And in the rest of the quote from before. So you can see why people might remember this project, or at least bits and pieces of it. Like Johnny Five Aces, everyone's favorite lovable outlaw from an original piece of concept art from the team. With a mug of beer in one hand, a cigarette burning in his mouth, a leg propped up on the table with a broken knee, four aces laid out before him, he confidently raises his middle finger, upon which he glued a fifth ace on to for some reason. Or maybe his pal Schultz, also from an original piece of concept art, carrying around a camera on a tripod set up on his back at all times, some kind of cybernetic eye implant and a bowler hat. It's unknown who these characters would be or how they fit in the story, whether they were protagonists, NPCs, party members, or even minor characters, but theirs are the faces of Zyborn Clock to this day. There's even a Johnny Five Aces Easter egg in Fallout New Vegas, where you'll find Johnny dead next to four balls lined up on the side of a cliff, along with a camera and some playing cards. Interestingly, knocking a ball off the cliff does not cause a copy of the fourth one to appear at the front, or the back, or to disappear, or, or however it went. The actual plot of Zyborn Clock is a mystery, though there are some excerpts from the original dialogue still lurking the darkest corners of the internet. Now, it's important to note that there are a lot of parodies and fan works surrounding Zyborn Clock, so a lot of what may seem authentic to the original project isn't. But I was able to track down a section called Prelude, also courtesy of Everything She Knows, which is genuine. At the end of a long room filled with whispers and handshakes sits a man fondling a small, dark object. The ancient wooden benches along the room's perimeter are full, mostly of women and children, leaving the men to mingle. The man sits firmly, offering avoiding eye contact which could be misinterpreted as an offer of his seat. He clutches the object nervously. Through a forest of arms, legs, and coattails, a small child wanders towards the man, drawn by curiosity and free of her unattentive mother's eye. What are you got there, mister? queries the girl. 
He pauses for a moment, considering plots which might have employed this child as a spy, paid in food to inquire. Exhausted and drawn to the child's innocence, the walls of secrecy melt for a moment. This, my darling, is a device. A device many men and women have died to see, to understand, and to own. In many ways, it is like one of your toys, but a toy for adults. This, darling, is the Zyborn Clock. Suddenly, barely visible in the dim light, the child's eyes change. The hazelnut-brown tones are ungluing into silver, melting into swirls of pearl and mechanical shades. Her body loses its shy posture and rapidly conforms to a rigid, upright stance. Her mouth opens slightly, and with program precision, she moves her wrist slowly towards her tiny lips. Orange Fox to Dietrich. Orange Fox to Dietrich. The golden egg has been located. I repeat, we've got it. Over. Frozen with guilt, the man slowly begins to run through the crowd. The girl screams, Rape! Rape! He tried to touch me! Help! For Dirk McLaren, wet s and day, January 19th, 2381, has begun very poorly. I was gonna cut that down somewhat, but, you know, I, I didn't want to butcher such vivid and striking art as this. Believe it or not, that's about the extent of what I could track down from the original project. Zyborn Clock has become something of a specter. Plenty of people claiming they know about the project, or have worked on it, and have some insider details or a plot description, you name it. But with so many people looking to hop on the Meme Express, it's hard to decipher what's real and what's fake. The only other thing we know for certain is that the project didn't last long. Some put it at about a month or a month and a half at most, some as few as just two weeks. The team admitted to having no game development experience, and together with the pitch, were mocked relentlessly for it. Combine that with the alleged egos on the team, and you have a recipe for disaster. There was one person on the original team that did have some kind of game design experience, but when they offered their disbelief over the size and scope of the game, the project lead either kicked them off the team outright, or insulted to them, making them quit on their own. This is backed up by the Something Awful forum poster from November 2008. Barely two weeks later, the whole project had imploded under a shitstorm of drama and neglect. The external site was closed, and the still active banner ads pointed to threads that were now either locked or gassed. Although most of the action happened on the external forums, most accounts state that things immediately turned clicky and circle jerky, and drama spread unchecked as there was no effective organization or leadership to settle disputes or coordinate efforts. And from a post on Reddit in 2012 from an AMA from someone claiming to have been on the team. I was supposed to be the lead, by lead I mean only, level designer, and the game was going to use the RPG Maker XP engine. As the project fell through in less than a month after getting started, I never actually got to design any levels. The drama, however, was ridiculous. Though I was not directly involved in said drama, as that was all the creator writers, but I do remember a few tidbits. I think the dumbest thing was when someone who had actual game-making know-how was kicked off the team due to some story game element argument. I don't know specifically what the argument was about, but when the guy was kicked out, he made a post about it, and the project was open game for mocking. That was the beginning of the end. But again, that's all just two random people's claims. Heck, it could have been the same person for all we know. There's so little public knowledge out there about Zyborn Clock and the team behind it that anyone can say anything and it'll be at least plausible. There are certainly plenty of people doing so. One person in the Something Awful forum claims the game would have featured full motion video cutscenes and a symphony orchestra. Another says there was a map design that had cities in the middle of nowhere and another place called Book World in it. That Redditor claiming to have worked on the game later said, It was odd from the beginning because I don't remember there being a lot of structure. I had one guy that was doing 2D pixel art for levels and I would ask him to make tile sets I could work with. However, we didn't ever even get to really design any actual levels or then play around with some ideas. In some ways, the fan creations are more notable than the original project itself. Sure, most of them are low effort jokes, but there's been some super creative stuff to spawn from this as well. In 2011, someone launched an Indiegogo for Zyborn Clock 5 Ace a short film based on the in-game story and Johnny Five Aces and Schultz. While the campaign failed, fittingly, the short film was completed and released in 2013. There was also what appears to be an attempt at making a fan game of sorts in 2008 by someone going by Doug Beach. They released a trailer that had more work gone into it than the actual game, and a website with some 
interesting text. This fan game recreation whatever never happened, though the website Beach Links to in the trailer's description is still up. This was definitely a troll job though, as whoever is running it is releasing games still to this day. They are terrible Russian troll asset flips like Fucker in the Gulag, Gaithal Graditi the Crypt of Darkness, and Fucker in the Woods released just two weeks ago. And let's not forget about Cyborg Clock Redux. One forum poster at Bay 12 Games forum attempt at recreating both the timeline of events surrounding the project and the game itself in text form. Much of what was written here seems to be non-original work, either written by them or someone else or collected from some far off play, I don't know. The game portion is well, it's not really a game so much as reading more fan fiction based on the story, set up around the ball example of course. You delete some sections of text and then some others will replace it and you just kind of read more. There's also general fan fiction, just as badly written as the initial story outlines and I don't think anyone would have it any other way. He recalled that they were once called Butterstream Spirals, named after the device used to make them, the Steam Butterer, and the company which made it, the Butter Steam Company. Then, as always happens with technology, the Steam Butterer was replaced by the Steam Butterer, which still ran on Steam, but differently, and was still made by Butter Steam Company. We'll likely never know what Zyborn Clock could have been, but saying that, I think we do. This project was doomed to fail from the very beginning, led by incompetence both in leadership skills and in basic game design. This is what happens when a bunch of people, young people mostly, who've never made a game before attempt to do so, and refuse to listen to anyone pointing out that maybe they need to learn to walk before they can go back in time and knock balls off cliffs. According to that reddit poster claiming to have been on the team, I never said I could do better than any professionals. I was around 19 or 20 when this whole thing started. I always liked making levels for games, so when someone made a thread about making a game, I said I'd try to help by making levels. That's the extent of my involvement. Who's to say if that's what the rest of the team were thinking, but with all the talk of how unique and revolutionary the game would have been, wanting to create an epic 100 hour RPG, seemingly without paying anyone or having any budget, doing it in less than a year according to everything she knows, and kicking off the one person on the team with actual game development experience, I'd imagine that at the very least, the people at the top were drinking a little too much of their own Kool-Aid. Does anyone say that anymore? None of this is to say that you can't make a game without any experience. That'd be a real catch-22. It's hard to say what exactly what went wrong with Zyborn Clock, but from what little information we have, there are some obvious mistakes that anyone wanting to make their own game must avoid. The first, biggest one, is that you need to know how to keep your ideas in check. There's a common problem with all game developers, big and small, experienced and newbie, and that's called feature creep. Basically, it's when you keep coming up with new ideas for your game, be it new gameplay mechanics, new story beats, new characters, a different art style than what you've already got, anything that'll give you more work to do. Adding to your game is perfectly natural, that's fine, but when you keep adding more and more and more stuff without removing or at least changing what you already have, then you're giving yourself a major problem. It's hard to say if this factored into Zyborn Clock, but what is obvious is that the people in charge set their sights way too high. Seasoned developers with huge teams and major publisher support behind them would struggle to make a 100 hour RPG, much less a bunch of random people on the internet with no prior experience communicating only via online forums. When you're starting your first project, even your first few projects, you need to start small. Trust me, I ran into this problem myself when I tried to start my own choose your own venture game a few months back. I planned this massive 15 chapter World War 1 epic with a bunch of different protagonists and player choices and stats, and you know, I figured because it was text based it wouldn't be too hard. Nope, it was crushingly difficult, because even though I have experience as a writer, I don't have experience in interactive fiction, which is a totally different ballpark. And even though I do have some slight programming experience, I don't have any experience in programming games, which again, was totally different than what I knew. Having your first game be a big, massive project, even using pre-made tools like RPG Maker and getting other people involved, as the Zyborn Clock team were doing, is still a monumental under 
undertaking, and their less than a year timetable would have been impossible. You're much better off making something small at first, picking an engine you want to use and a genre you want to make games in, and you know, making one or even several little test games. That way you can get a feel for not only the tools, but also your own process, get some feedback, and then grow and evolve your bigger ideas using your newfound knowledge as you work your way up to them. Nobody in the industry today, even in the indie scene, had their first game be a mega success. Jonathan Blow, creator of Braid and The Witness, started out porting Doom and Doom 2 to set top boxes before then making a little known game called Wolfram. His company failed, putting him in debt, forcing him to do contract work for years. Phil Fish, alleged creator of Fez, started at Ubisoft where he worked on licensed games like Open Season. Edmund McMillan and Tommy Refinez, I still haven't looked up how to pronounce his name, creators of Super Meat Boy, both got started making online Flash games. Dean Dodrill, the single developer behind Dust and Elysium Tale and Never Stop Sneaking, used to be an artist and animator at Epic Games. Another important tip to remember is to never let your ego get the better of you. If someone tells you that what you're doing is stupid or it doesn't work and they have way more experience than you, they're probably worth listening to. That doesn't mean you should take their word as gospel, but consider why they're telling you that. Ask them what they would change or how they would improve upon your idea. That's the exact opposite of what whoever was in charge of Zyborn Clock did. The name of that experienced developer kicked off the team has been lost to time, just like everyone else involved. It could be someone who only made one prototype for all we know, or as I like to think, it could have been Jay Tholen, who was a frequent poster on Something Awful years ago, creating Dropsy after posting about it in those very forums back in 2008. Zyborn Clock's greatest legacy lives on as a meme, a joke that's lasted 13 years and counting. Pretty impressive for a game project that petered out after only a few weeks, and a great reminder that making a video game is hard hard work and requires complete cooperation amongst the team, patience, skill, and a little bit of luck. Not somebody who wants to throw every idea they've got on an internet forum, and sadly, not our pal Johnny Five Aces. Hey everyone, I wish I was able to uncover some more information about the game or the original project, but it's been so long that the original posts have been deleted that I don't think it will ever really have the full details of what went on behind the scenes. Still, if you enjoyed the video, let me know by dropping a like, and I will see you next time. Take care.